In Norse mythology, where gods walk among mortals and legends fade into reality, there are objects of power and mystery that have captured the imagination for millennia. Woven from the very essence of the gods and dwarves who created them, these magical artifacts are as central to these ancient tales as the characters themselves. Please note that Norse mythology is an ancient oral tradition with multiple variations on the stories, and that some of these items may be interpreted differently in different sources. Also, the magical nature of some of these items is not always explicitly detailed in the original sources, so enjoy the video and share it with the people you think might like it. Let's start. Number 1. Danesleaf In the darkness of Norse mythology, where gods and giants wage war and fates are often sinister and ruthless, few weapons carry as heavy a burden as Danesleaf, the cursed sword. Danesleaf was forged by the dwarves, the only creatures in the Norse universe to possess the ability to create objects of such magnificence and doom. Dwarves, inhabitants of Svartalfheim, the Dark World, were known for their magical abilities and their ability to forge weapons and jewels of untold power. This sword, however, had a darker purpose and a more terrible fate. At first glance, Dane's Leaf might appear to be a sword like any other. But make no mistake, this weapon harbors a curse like no other. It was said that once a Dane's Leaf was drawn, she always had to take a life before she could be sheathed again. It was not a sword for empty threats or shows of force, if the blade was drawn, death was certain. But Dainsleaf's power did not end there. Every wound inflicted by this sword was beyond healing. Every cut, every puncture, every scratch was a death sentence. This sword did not bring wounds, it brought the end of life. Dainsleaf came to be possessed by King Hogni and plays a central role in the story of the conflict between him and King Hedden. In the climactic battle, Hedden pleads with Hogni to stop the fighting. However, Hogni refuses, declaring that the bloody carnage cannot be stopped, for Dainsleaf had been drawn and must be sated with the blood of men. Number 2. Mjolnir, the hammer of the gods, a tool of creation and destruction like no other in Norse myths. This is not just any weapon, but an extension of the power of Thor, the god of thunder, and is synonymous with his own presence and fury. The story of Mjolnir is as extraordinary as that of Thor himself, it was forged by the dwarves Brokker and Sindri, two crafting brothers whose skills were unmatched. They accepted the challenge of Loki, the god of deceit, to create gifts for the gods that would exceed those the elves had made. Sindri, using his magical furnace, produced three wondrous artifacts. The Gullenbursty gold boar, the Draupnir bracelet, and finally, Mjolnir. But creating him was not easy. Loki, in an attempt to make the brothers lose the bet, transformed into a mosquito, and bit Broker while he was pumping the bellows on the furnace. But Broker held on, and though the hammer's shaft proved shorter than intended due to Loki's interference, Mjolnir's power was unaffected. Mjolnir was a tool of divine justice, capable of destroying mountains and annihilating the enemies of the gods. But despite its destructive power, it also had a creative and protective role. Thor used Mjolnir to bless marriages, births, and paradoxically, to raise the dead. This hammer was not a mere extension of Thor's arm, but a manifestation of his power and authority. It was said that when Thor cast Mjolnir, it always returned to his hand, a ceaseless cycle of destruction and renewal. Furthermore, only those who were worthy could lift Mjolnir, a testament to the nobility and honor required to wield such power. Beyond its strength and its role in myths, Mjolnir also has symbolic importance in Norse culture. Mjolnir pendants have been found at various archaeological sites, worn as amulets for protection, and as a statement of faith in the Norse gods. And speaking of faith, I have faith in you, that you will share this video with your friends. You will give it a like, and if you have not yet subscribed, you will do it now. Let's continue. Number 3. Draupnir Draupnir, whose name translates to the Dripping One, is a legendary gold bracelet belonging to Odin, the father of all, the supreme god in Norse mythology. But it is not a simple ornament, since it has the magical ability to multiply. Every nine nights, Draupnir produces eight gold rings of the same size and weight as the original. Thus, Draupnir is not just a jewel, but an inexhaustible source of wealth. 
The origin of Draupnir is as fascinating as the item itself. It was created by the talented dwarven brothers Sindri and Brocker as part of a bet with Loki, the god of trickery and mischief. As we've seen before, once forged, the bracelet was presented to the gods in the Hall of Asgard and Odin placed it on his arm. Since then, every nine nights, another eight rings fall from Draupnir, granting Odin infinite wealth. But the bracelet is not only a sign of wealth. He has also played a role in various sagas and epic poems. For example, after the death of his son Baldur, Odin placed Draupnir on his funeral pyre, and the ring was later returned to Odin by the messenger god Hermadar. Number 4. Gullenbursti. Gullenbursti is a magical and amazing creature from Norse mythology. As we have already seen with the other two items, this divine boar was created by the talented dwarves Sindri and Brokker as part of the bet with Loki. The dwarves, masters of the forge, created Gullenbursti from pure gold. Her radiant, glowing skin was a shimmering gold, with bristles so bright they lit up the darkest night. But Gullenbursti was not just a sight to behold. He possessed remarkable abilities. She could run through the air and over the water faster than any horse, no matter how fast her enemy was, and her perpetual light could dispel any shadow. Once created, it was presented to the gods in Asgard. Freyr, the god of sun, rain, and fertility, claimed the magnificent boar. With Gullenbursti at his side, Freyr became a formidable adversary in battle. The boar's golden glow often preceded Freyr's arrival, heralding his presence with his divine light. Number 5. Skadi's Bow Skadi is one of the most intriguing figures in Norse mythology. She is a Jotun, a kind of giant, but she is also considered a goddess. She is known primarily as a goddess of the hunt and winter, and is famous for her bow, a weapon as formidable as she is. Skadi's bow is a hunting and war instrument, suitable for her strong and resistant character. With this bow, Skadi moves through the cold and snowy Nordic landscapes, stalking her prey with deadly precision. Her bow becomes an extension of her very being, each arrow her will flying toward her target. But beyond its practical function, the Skadi Arch also has a symbolic dimension. As a Jotun, Skadi represents the wild and uncontrollable forces of nature, and her bow can therefore be seen as a symbol of that wild autonomy. The shot arrow cannot be returned, just as the processes of nature cannot be reversed once they have been set in motion. In the myths, Skadi is a formidable figure, known as much for her fury as for her bravery. For example, when her father was killed by the gods, Skadi marched to Asgard, the fortress of the gods, armed with her bow and ready to avenge her death. The gods, impressed by her audacity, agreed to make it up to her, and Skadi became one of them, showing that even the gods respected her power and her bow. Number 6. Gleipnir Gleipnir is a truly unique creation in Norse mythology, a chain like no other. His story is intrinsically linked to that of the monstrous wolf Fenrir, son of the trickster god Loki and the giantess Angerboda. Fenrir was a creature of formidable strength that grew endlessly, inciting fear and unrest among the gods of Asgard. Concerned by the threat Fenrir posed, the gods searched for ways to contain the wolf. They tried twice to chain Fenrir with huge iron chains forged by the gods, but both times, Fenrir proved too powerful and easily broke the chains. It was then that the gods turned to the dwarves, known for their skill in the forge and their magic. The dwarves forged Gleipnir, a chain made not of metal but of the most unlikely elements. The sound of a cat's footsteps, the beards of women, the roots of mountains, the nerves of the bear, the breath of the fish, and the bird's saliva. Gleipnir, despite being as thin and smooth as a silken ribbon, possessed unmatched strength. When the gods returned to Fenrir with Gleipnir, the wolf was wary, suspecting some trap. He only agreed to be bound if one of the gods put his hand in his mouth as a guarantee. The god Tyr, known for his courage, agreed. And when Fenrir discovered that he could not break Gleipnir, he bit off Tyr's hand. Thus, Gleipnir achieved what no other chain could, contain the ferocious force of Fenrir. It is said that Fenrir will remain bound by Gleipnir until Ragnarok, the end of the world in Norse mythology. Although seemingly soft and fragile, Gleipnir is a reminder that true strength does not always lie in physical appearance, and that even the most challenging obstacles can be overcome with ingenuity and creativity. Number 7. Anverinot. Anverinot is a precious jewel imbued with legendary power. 
deeply rooted in Norse mythology and Germanic literature. This jewel, also known as the Ring of Andvari, is the center of stories of greed, betrayal, and misfortune. Its origin is found in the dwarf Andvari, a clever and cunning dwarf who lived in the form of a fish in the depths of a mountain river. Andvari was known for his immense wealth, but mostly for a gold ring called Andvari Naut, which was said to have the ability to produce gold. However, Andvari's life and the fate of the ring would be forever changed when the god Loki caught him in his magical fishing net. In order to save his life, Anvari had to deliver all of his treasures to Loki, including the precious Anvarinaut. However, before handing it over, Anvari cursed the ring, declaring that it would bring misfortune and death to whoever possessed it. And so, Anvarinaut passed from hand to hand, unleashing tragedy and misfortune in his path. Each possessor, drawn by its dazzling brilliance and the promise of wealth from it, met a terrible fate. From King Hreidmar, who was slain by his own children, to Sigurd, a famous hero who died in a plot of deceit and revenge, the ring was a constant source of misery. Number 8. Brisingamen. Brisingamen is a jewel without equal, recognized as the most beautiful and precious necklace of all existence. It is not simply a jewel, it is a masterpiece, an embodiment of beauty and desire. But more than that, Brisingamen is a manifestation of the powerful influence of the goddess who possessed her, Freysia. Freysia, the Norse goddess of love, beauty, and fertility, and also a central figure in magic and war, is the rightful owner of Brisingamen. This necklace is so dazzling and enchanting that even Freysia herself, known for the matchless beauty of it, was mesmerized by the magnificence of it. The story goes that Freya saw the necklace in the forge of the four dwarves known as the Brisings. Enchanted by her beauty, Freya wanted the necklace for herself. However, the dwarves were not willing to give it up for gold or silver. Instead, they demanded that Freya spend one night with each of them. Freya, driven by her desire for her necklace, agreed to her demand. With the Brisingamen necklace around her neck, the already stunning Freya became a being of unmatched beauty, drawing the admiration and desire of gods and mortals alike. However, the jewel is not only a symbol of beauty and desire, it also represents Freya's cunning and determination to get what she wants, even if it means making considerable sacrifices. Number 9. Skidbladnir. Skidbladnir is a name that resonates with wonder in Norse mythology. It is not a sword, a shield, or a jewel. Skidbladnir is indeed a unique vessel, a ship like no other. Its origin and characteristics make it a marvel among mythical artifacts. This ship of the gods was not forged by humans or gods, but by the skillful and mysterious dwarves. The craft was made at the request of the trickster god, Loki, who gave it to Freyr, the Norse god of prosperity and abundance, as a gift of reconciliation. Now one might think, what makes this ship so special? After all, it's just a boat, right? But Skidbladnir is no ordinary ship. She possesses magical properties that defy mortal comprehension. It is the largest ship ever built, capable of carrying all the gods on board at once, no matter how many there are. Despite its immense size, it can be folded like a cloth when not in use and stored in a pocket. This marvelous ship also has the magical property of always having a favorable wind driving its sails, allowing the gods to travel quickly wherever they wish to go. The ride in is always safe and fast. Regardless of the destination, the ship can reach it with ease and efficiency, being immune to the dangers of the sea and storms. In the vast cosmos of Norse mythology, this ship is a bond of union, a bearer of the gods, and a symbol of the wondrous skill of the dwarves and Loki's ingenuity. Before you see the last item on this list, remember that there are more, many more magical and fascinating items. If you want a part two, please write it down in the comments, since many of the videos I make are thanks to your requests. Number 10. Jallerhorn. The Jallerhorn, whose name roughly translates to the Sounding Horn, is one of the most famous and symbolic objects in Norse mythology. This object is mainly associated with Heimdall, the guardian god of the Bifrost, the rainbow bridge that connects Asgard, the abode of the gods, with the human world, Midgard. Heimdall is known as the keen-eared god and the watcher of the gods, and his horn, the Jallerhorn, is an extension of these roles. With supernatural hearing from him, Heimdall can hear the growth of grass on the ground and the wool on the sheep. 
But his most important task is to stay on guard against the attack of the giants, and for this, he has the Jallerhorn. This is not an object of daily use. Its purpose is very specific, and its sound is meant to mark an event of cosmic importance. According to ancient sagas, the horn is kept hidden, buried under the sacred tree Yggdrasil, awaiting its use. The day the giants rise to attack Asgard and Ragnarok, the end of the world is about to begin. Heimdall will take the Jallerhorn and blow into it. The sound of the horn will be so powerful that it will echo through the nine worlds, awakening the gods and alerting them to the start of the last great battle. This will be the final clarion call, the call to war that will mark the end and rebirth of the world.